Well, giving all praises to the Most High, it's good to be back, but it's cold to be back. I don't know about y'all. I'm waiting for uh, uh, Officer Mike and his wife, uh, Lisa, uh, Lisha Zane, Zane, Lisa Zane, to come through on that. They're going to hit Lotto. How many times have you heard they're going to hit Lotto? Everybody going to hit Lotto. Okay. But sisters, how are y'all doing this Sabbath day? Good, brothers. How are y'all doing? Um, what do I want to start with first? Oh, uh, we had a, we just came back from, uh, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, as well as Cosmo, Mexico. And, uh, I don't hate Northern Kingdom, but they do get on my nerves. They treated us like slaves. If I had a bat to beat the hell out, I would have I whooped every one of them. They, want, they call the cops on me. They said, we don't like, they called me, uh, what they call me? Tigre, Negro Tigre, that black tiger right there. That's what they called me, a black tiger. I was going to tear, tear them little Mexicans up. <laughs> they treated Esau like kings out there. Man, I'm looking at us, what the hell is this? Yeah, I'll leave them alone. But we love our brothers. We do love our brothers. They do. They got to get their mind right. That was the first time the gospel hit out there. If y'all see the photos, they stood back from the camp, some of them. They, they, they really didn't want to approach. They were nervous. Uh, so before we get into the main lesson, the first lesson I want to touch on, I know some of y'all came out of uh, pan-Africanism, Afrocentricity, like myself, Deacon Yawasop, who was in, involved in that. And uh, Deacon Yawa said, you said Honor Kwanzaa. Did you ever celebrate that? Hell no. no? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about, the briefly, Kwanzaa versus Hanukkah. In brief, uh, a brother by the name of Ronald McKinley Everett. Today he's known as Dr. Maulano Karenga, professor and chairman of black student studies at California State University. He created the holiday known as Kwanzaa today. He created it back in 1966, the turbulent 60s. Uh, if we can look up Kwanzaa uh, on Wikipedia, let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, blow up the picture first. Let's look at the photo. And let's make sure on Periscope they can see the photo too. That's uh, Ron Karenga right there in the center. And if you notice for Kwanzaa, they have the seven candlesticks, the candelab candelabra. Everyone has, some of them have the Kenti hats on. I even see Edomites, one, two, three, in this photo. All right, pull back, pull back. Okay. Kwanzaa is a week-long celebration held in the United States and in other nations of the Western African diaspora. The word diaspora means the scattered, scattering, that's what it means in the Americas. The celebration honors African heritage and African American culture and is observed from December 26th to January 1st, culminating in a feast and gift giving. Kwanzaa has seven core principles. Kwanzaa has seven core principles. Okay. Let's go down. Uh, let's go to the principles. Okay, principles and symbols. See, seven candles in a candelabra. Am I pronouncing that right? Candelabra. Symbolize the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa celebrates what its founder called the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Or Nguzo Saba. Where's Namdi? Ezekiel. Is he here today? Okay, you can pronounce these words for me. Uh, consisting of what Karenga called the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange with the world. These seven principles compromise, and the language is Swahili. Uh, Kawada, a, a Swahili word meaning common. Each of the seven days of Kwanzaa is dedicated to one of the following principles as follows. Umoja, that stands for unity, to strive for and to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. The next one is the second candle represents a Kuju Chakazulu, what does that say? Kuju Chakulia. What he said. It stands for self determination, to define and name ourselves as well as to create and speak for ourselves. Ujimas, the third candle, which represents the collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community 
together and make our brothers and sisters' problems our problems and to solve them together. The next one is Uj Ujama, which stands for Cooperative Economics. To build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses and to profit from them together. Then the next one is Nia, which stands for Purpose. To make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community in order to restore people to their traditional greatness. Uh, the sixth one of, is Kumba, stands for creativity. To do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. And the seventh one is Imani, which stands for faith. To believe with all our hearts in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and our righteousness and victory of our struggle. So, this to the unlearned and untrained ear sounds, uh, give me a word, sounds good, encouraging, deep, beneficial for our people. I was very impressed when I had, back when I was in Afrocentricity, I said, yes! But we never kept it. But uh, I said, okay. It was something. It was something. Yeah, I thought it was deep. Uh, I thought it was admirable. But late in life, when I learned the scriptures, learned the scriptures, I said, ah, there it is right there. Give me, uh, uh, who's reading for me? Sir. Give me Jeremiah 18, verse 12. Jeremiah 18, verse 12. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 12. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. Wait, wait. Read that again. Read that again. And they said, there this is... is what, now, remember, this is Israelite speaking. Now, uh, Ron, uh, Dr. Molana Karenga, as he, will, he likes to be called, he is an Israelite, whether he knows it or not. This is what we're reading here applies to him and many of our people. Read it one more time. And they said... There is no hope. We felt at the time there was no hope. Remember, this was created during the 60s. He said, there's no hope. He said, we cannot be celebrating these uh, white supremacist holidays, which we all agreed with. Absolutely. Absolutely. But go ahead. But we will walk after our own devices. See, here's the problem. We will walk after our own devices. Go ahead. And we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. See that? Everyone walk after the imagination of his evil heart. Hence... Kwanzaa. It sounds very, uh, uh, help me out, in empowering. It sounds very self-empowering. However, it's from the devices of a man's own heart. Watch this. Give me Sirach in the Apocrypha chapter 5, and let's start at verse 2. Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2. Now, I know the brother meant well. He meant well. However, the problem is it goes outside of God's plan for our people. Sirach chapter 5. Let's read 2 through 4. The book of Sirach chapter 5 verse 2. Listen good. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. That is the number one problem with blacks and Latinos. We love to follow our own mind. Esau has taught us to be individuals. As individuals, we cannot work collectively as a race, as a unit, as a nation. Esau works together. So although this uh, Kwanzaa is a, Kwanzaa is a man-made holiday, he's creating it to try to get us to work together. However, it's based upon his own individualism, his own individual ideas. Read it again. Follow not thine own mind and, and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. Go ahead. And say not, who shall control me for my works? And say not, who shall control me for my works? I want you all to remember there is a God who does tend to get angry with our people for doing foolishly. Go ahead. For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. See that? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Come on. Say not, I have sinned. And what harm hath happened unto me? You ever notice with black people, we do evil things. This ain't nothing happened to me. I'm good. The Lord ain't do nothing to me. That's our problem. Go ahead. For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. See that? He will in no wise let thee go. Go back to Kwanzaa. Go back. I want to show you something. So, meaning, there's a judgment for us doing that. 
Now you may ask, why does the Lord judge us? The white man has done the same thing, but the white man was not given God's laws. We were. That's why he says in Amos, I will judge you. Click his name. Go back up to the top. Just click his name. Down, 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 down. Right there. Click it. Say it on the mic. No, okay. Go down. So that's heavy what the bishop just said, that although um, we went from one madness to the next, and you might say, well, dealing with Esau stuff is just as bad, and dealing with this Kwanzaa thing just as bad. So, you, you know, Esau, like you said, Esau was not given God's laws. We were, which means we have a responsibility. That's what I'm... Uh, when I think about the statement that you just said, it's making the point that we have a responsibility. We are not like other people. The Most High gave us his laws. Everybody else could be lawless because they were not given the laws. We were. And because we were given the law, we have to conduct ourselves differently. We cannot measure our actions. We cannot measure our lives by the lives of others because they were not given the laws. We were. The Most High is not going to hold them, hold them guilty in terms of keeping God's law because they weren't given to them. We were. We're responsible for keeping these laws. Exactly. So we just read in Sirach 5, Say not I have sinned and what harm hath happened unto me. For the Lord is long-suffering and he will in no wise let thee go. So pan down. Right there. See where it says conviction for assault and false imprisonment. Now, I'm not, let me just preface it by saying, I'm not saying that this is true at all, but this is what happened. It was in the news. Uh, whether it's true or false, it was in the news. It says, in 1971, Karenga was sentenced to one to ten years in prison on counts of felonious assault and false imprisonment. One of the victims gave testimony of how Karenga and other men tortured her and another woman. The woman described having been stripped and beaten with an electrical cord. Karenga's estranged wife, Brenda Lorraine Karenga, testified that she sat on the other woman's stomach while another man forced water into her mouth through a hose. May 14, 1971 article. So if, if, if anyone doubts, you can find it here. Article in the Los Angeles Times described the testimony of one of the women. Deborah Jones, who once was given the Swahili title of an African queen, said she and Gail Davis were whipped with an electrical cord and beaten with a karate baton after being ordered to remove their clothes. She testified that a hot soldering iron was placed in Miss Davis' mouth and placed against Miss Davis' face and that one of her own big toes was tightened in a vice. Karenga, head of us, you have forgot, forgot the acronym what it stands for, also put detergent and running hoses in their mouths, she said. They also were hit on the heads with toasters. Jones and Brenda Karenga testified that Karenga believed the women were conspiring to poison him, which Davis has attributed to a combination of ongoing police pressure and his own drug abuse. Drug abuse. Karenga denied any involvement in the torture and argued that the prosecution was political in nature. He was in prison at the California Men's Colony where he studied and wrote on feminism. Now, let's say hypothetically, let's say there was a conspiracy against him. You still had his wife testify to certain things and the other women testified to certain things that was done. So that's what made you go, hmm, okay. Uh, where he studied and wrote on feminism, pan-Africanism, and other subjects. The U.S. organization fell into disarray during his absence and was disbanded in 1974. After he petitioned several black state officials to support his parole on fair sentencing grounds, it was granted in 1975. Karenga has declined to discuss the convictions with reporters and does not mention them in biographical materials. During a 2007 appearance at Wabash College, he again denied the charges and described himself as a former political prisoner. Okay, we'll end it right there. Can you read that again for me? Sirach 5, please. This is, this is a lesson for us all. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 4. Start at 2. Verse 2. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. 
and say not, Who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. The Lord will not let you go. If you're in your own, I'm going to create things. I'm going to make stuff up. Moses says, all right, I got something for you. I got you. Give me Exodus. So the seven branch candelabra is plagiarized. It's basic plagiarism. Where do you get it from? The Bible. Watch this. Exodus 25, let's start at verse 31. So those of you who may have or may still be practicing Kwanzaa, stop it. It's not of God. It is not of the Lord. It is man-made. It is plagiarized from the holy scriptures of our ancestors, the Israelites. Exodus 25, verse 31. Let's start there. The book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft. And his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. So you had one large shaft. It says, and out of the sides of the shaft, what would happen? And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. So three came out of one side, three came out of the other. Go ahead. Three branches of the candlestick out of one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knot and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knot and a flower. So the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knots and their flowers. So they were very heavily designed. Go ahead. And there shall be a knot under two branches of the same, and a knot under two branches of the same and a knot under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knots and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they, sh and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes, snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. The snuff dish is how they put it out, how they put the fire out. Go ahead. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. The mount was when Moses went up. God showed Moses the design of what he wanted it to look like. So Moses had to get artifices to design it exactly the way the Most High described it to him. Give me uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 1. All I want is verse 21. So we are not to follow the Kemetic community and the celebration of the Swahili man-made custom called Kwanzaa. We are to celebrate Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a Hebrew word for dedication. That's what it means. Hanukkah is a Hebrew word that means dedication. And we're going to show you that further. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 21. And entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlestick of light. So the candlestick of light is what we just read in the book of Exodus chapter 25. The candlestick of light was huge. Can, uh, Abiel, can you show me a picture of the Ark of Triumph when Rome came in? I want to show you the size of it. Okay, I want you all to get a, a visual. Many times people think we made the design of the uh, seven branch menorah up. No, we didn't. God said there were seven branches. One main shaft, three branches came out of one side, three out of the other. Well, what about the nine? There's no such thing as a nine branch menorah in the scriptures. No such thing as an eight branch. There's always seven. Stop listening to the white man. You got it for me? Right there. You see them carrying it out there? Look how big that thing was. It was made of pure gold. That was the description that we're reading. You see the knops? Knops is those, those big the designs, like round designs they got there. That's what Exodus 25 was talking about. So Rome stole all this from us. And that stuff was pure gold. Okay. So this is where the candelabra got its foundation from. Okay. From there, let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 4. Hosea's 
And let's go to verse, all I want is verse 49 and 50. First Maccabees chapter 4. This is the rededication, the dedication. The book of First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 39. They made also new holy vessels, and into the temple they brought the candlestick. You see that? So the candlestick, again, is that seven-branch menorah. That's what it, when the Bible talks about candlestick, that's what it's making reference to. Go ahead. And the altar of burnt offerings, and of incense, and the table. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted, that it might give light in the temple. You see that? And the candlestick, which were the seven branches, they lighted, that they might give light in the temple because it was so big it lit up the entire temple. From there, give me Matthew chapter 5. All I want is verse 15. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Again, many times we got our Western American frame of thought. We keep thinking a little candle. This is talking about the seven branch menorah. Christ ain't talking about what you buy from the bodega. A little candle. He's talking about the menorah. <laughs> Just like what you said, I know a lot of people thought that it was one jack jump over the candlestick type, exactly. of, type of candle. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, be nimble. <laughs> Get a uh, Revelation 1 and 20. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. This is Christ. Go ahead. And the seven golden candlesticks. That's the menorah. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Represents the leadership of those seven congregations. Go ahead. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Those are the seven major churches throughout Asia Minor. So it had a, a deeper meaning later on in history that the Lord already knew about. All right. So Hanukkah is a holiday about deliverance from white supremacy. Write that down. Hanukkah is about deliverance from white supremacy, just like Passover is. But Passover was from... Black supremacy, right. the damn Hamites. Right. But Hanukkah is about deliverance from white supremacy. Get that right. Don't get it twisted. Okay. Uh, we dedicated the temple back to the Most High, a temple originally built by King Solomon. Okay. This is the temple that was rebuilt. Watch this. Give me 1 Kings 6, verse 38. It took Solomon seven years to build the temple. This is before Babylon came in and destroyed it. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 6, verse 38. And in the eleventh year, in the month bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof, and according to all the fashion of it. So he was seven years in building it. It took him seven years to build the temple. Okay, so we honored that thing. Give me, stay in the same chapter, jump up to verse 22. Verse 22. And the whole house... He overlaid with gold. Let's wait, wait. We don't realize how go glorious this thing looked. The whole house was overlaid with gold. This thing was beautiful. It wasn't no sheetrock like we got up in here. Gold. Right. That's why I say that when you read the scriptures, you got to take your mind and your head out of the American scene and see what the Bible is actually saying. You, you, you can't use American standards and what you learned in Babylon to try to get the mental images in your mind of what the scriptures are saying. You know, I saw a movie with King Solomon played by uh, Yul Brenner. Oh God! They didn't even show. They didn't show no gold, nothing. They had sheetrock too and cement. Damn. I said, "What the hell is this?" Uh, Yul Brenner. What the hell is he doing playing a part of Solomon? Exactly. He should have been getting his back whipped right there on the set. <laughs> From there, stay in the same chapter. Jump up to verse twenty-three. I mean, the next verse. 23 down to 28. Verse 23. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive trees. So out of two olive trees, Solomon had two cherubims, which are angels carved. Go ahead. Each 10 cubits high. Ten, that's 20 feet high. Because a cubit is about two feet or more. Two feet. That's 20 feet. Go ahead. And five cubits was the one wing of the cherubim. Uh -huh. And five cubits the other wing of the cherubim 
from the ut uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits. So you got to imagine it. In the temple, you got an angel. You stand up. Stand up. Just face, face well, I'm, if it's this way. One wing went out and hold up. One wing went out like that, and the other wing went out like this, and it held up the ceiling. Y'all got to imagine it. So when you walked in, you had a 20-foot high ceiling with two images of two black golden angels with their wings stretched out holding up the ceiling. That's beautiful. That's what you call architecture Yeah, in the real in there the real go. sense. That's some engineering architecture for real. Architectural images, by right. the way. Yeah. There you go. There images. you go. Architectural imagery. Hey, Abiel, do me a favor. I, I couldn't find it. Maybe you can. I know you're good at this stuff. In the movie, it's either Return of the King or it may, might be The Hobbit. They walk to some castle, and you have images, huge images, as they walk in of their former kings. You know what I'm talking about? It might be Lord of the Rings. One of those. Yeah. Okay. So when I saw that, because remember, J.R. Tolkien, who wrote that movie, he was so-called Jewish. He was Amalek, so-called Jewish. He based everything on the scriptures. They said he would sit around and read the Bible and make up those Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, got it all from here. The Witch of Mordor and all that was from here. And the locations. Right there you go, right there. There you go. So imagine, you got to imagine, he got that from what we're reading here with the angels with their, and they had faces. So images are evil. God told Solomon. God told Solomon. I'm sorry. God told Solomon to make these images, these black images. Stop listening to these undercover Edomites, because that's what I'm going to start calling these people. See the three ships yeah, see, right. Look at the three ships at the bottom. Look how huge them things was. Right. That's contrast. That's, that's the established scale, so you can understand how big those things are. Exactly. Exactly. So in the, the temple was beautiful. I, I, it's hard. We got to try to sit down and draw that thing. It's just hard. You got to, because we stuck on Negro. Just try to imagine that stuff for our, for our people. Go ahead. Uh, Thor, the first one, when it shows the, the castle was gold. Let me get that image real quick. I think it shows it. Give an example. Just give an example. That thing is bass. That's, that's pure gold. So that's the temple. Well, imagine the temple is better than that, of course. And you see the big is that statues on the side there, on the left? That's an example. That's an example. Now Esau, of course, takes our imagery and makes it his own, but that's an idea of what you can get regarding the temple and how it was built and t told to be built. Exactly. The floating city. Right. I see that floating city. Yes. Oh, Ozias, what verse did you leave off at? That was, I was at the end of verse 24. Okay, we're reading down to 28. Okay. Verse 25. And the other cherubim was 10 cubits. Both cherubims were of one measure and one size. The height of the one cherub was... Ten cubits, so was it of the other cherub. And he set the cherubims within the inner house, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims, so that the wing of the one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. And their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. And he overlaid the cherubims with gold. Mm. You see that? You see that? So it was beautiful, bro. I, I can't even. I can't imagine this thing. So now this temple is what the Babylonians destroyed around the year 586 B.C. under Nebuchadnezzar. We re rebuilt it under uh, our forefather named Zerubbabel. Okay, Under Zerubbabel, you had Nehemiah, Ezra around 539. This was 23 years later uh, when the Persian king Cyrus gave liberty, gave the Israelites liberty from captivity. So we rebuilt it, but it didn't look as glorious when you read the book of Haggai. It said it did not look as good. Then the Greeks came in and defiled it in 166 B.C. under uh, Antiochus Epiphany. I believe it was the fourth or the third. Fourth? You know, I always get them mixed up. Uh, then it was rededicated two years later in 164 B.C. by the Maccabees. Give me John 10, 22. So when they rededicated the temple in 164 under Judah Maccabees and his brethren, years later... Our Savior, the King, honored that day. Come on. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Y'all see that? 
So let me ask a question out here. How many winter holidays do we have? How many winter holidays do we have? Raise your hand. Don't everybody raise it at once. Okay, I see three hands, four. Let me hear this young man right here in the front. State your name. Shalom. Shalom. Brother Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Oh, okay. oh. Three. Wait, wait, wait. Just stop. <laughs> stop. I need y'all to get, help these brothers with names. Everybody's hearing other brothers' names taking the same names. I think he's the fifth Zephaniah now. More than that, right? Yeah. Y'all you know, read the book of Chronicles. You get all names in there. I'm sorry. Zephaniah, what'd you say? There's three. Uh, the Feast of Dedication, Feast of Purim, and the Destruction of Nicanor. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. You know why I said good? Because I forgot Nicana. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> Very good. You're right. You're absolutely right. All praises to the Most High. Is he been in the beginner's class? Give me uh, Colossians 2.18. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. When it says in worshiping of angels, going into messengers, men, that's what it's talking about. Read it again. Let no man beguile you. Let of no man trick you. Go ahead. Of your reward. Of your reward. In a voluntary humility. In voluntary humility, you humble yourself to something some man made. Go ahead. And worshiping of angels. Worshiping man made doctrines. Was that it? Uh, no. Intruding into those things which ye have not seen. Intruding into those things which ye have not seen. Because they, so they, men like to say, I had a vision or a dream from God, and God showed me that this is what we should do. No. So Kwanzaa has nothing to do with the Most High. He gave us Hanukkah, which is the Feast of Dedication. Hanukkah is based on history. It's not based on somebody I had a dream theory. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.